In this lesson, I'll teach you what you need to know about bisected angles, as well as angles of a polygon and angles that make up a straight line. We'll also check out angles that create a circle. Without further ado, let's start by reviewing bisected angles. Bisected angles are angles that are cut equally in half. Sounds simple, right? Let's look at this problem about bisected angles. In the figure, AB equals BC equals AC, and BD bisects angle ABC. What is the value of X? The answer choices are A, 15, B, 20, C, 30, D, 45, and E, 60. Let's start by underlining the facts. AB equals BC, which equals AC. Now let's show that in the drawing. We can mark AB and BC with a single line to indicate that they're the same length. We'll draw a line below AC to mark that as equal. Since all the sides of this triangle are equal, we know it is an equilateral triangle. This means each of the angles is 60 degrees. The problem also says that BD bisects angle ABC. That means angle ABC is cut into two equal halves. If angle ABC is 60, then angle CBD is half of 60, which means angle CBD is 30 degrees. We're looking to solve for X, and X corresponds with angle CBD, which means X is 30 degrees. So the correct answer is C. Now let's talk about polygons. The ACT may ask you to find the sum of the interior angles of a polygon. There are two ways of doing this. First, let's start with the basics. A polygon is a plane figure with at least three straight sides and angles. In the example shown here, the polygon has five sides and five angles. The first method we'll use is the formula for the sum of the interior angles, n minus 2 times 180 degrees, where n is the number of angles of the polygon. Now, let's solve an ACT problem that involves calculating the sum of the angles of a five-sided polygon. In the pentagon shown below, what is the sum of the measures of the interior angles? A is 104, B is 360, C is 540, D is 720, and E is 900. Let's label these answer choices sum of interior angles. And we'll circle the key words sum, measures, and interior angles. We'll use our formula sum equals n minus 2 times 180 degrees. In this polygon, there are five angles, so n is 5, which means that the sum of all these angles must equal 5 minus 2 times 180 degrees. We do the math and quickly find that the sum of all these angles equals 540 degrees, which is choice C. Nice work! Another way to find the sum of the interior angles is to break the polygon up into triangles. Let's give it a shot. You'll start by choosing a corner, also called a vertex. A vertex is a special kind of point that describes the corners or intersections of geometric shapes. Here's a polygon with a vertex chosen. Now, try to create as many triangles as possible inside this polygon by drawing lines from this selected vertex to all the other vertices on the polygon. In this case, we have three triangles. Let's number them. Since we know that there are 180 degrees in a triangle, we can multiply 180 by our three triangles to get 540 degrees. The polygon we just looked at isn't regular because the side and angle lengths aren't the same. If a polygon is regular, like a square or an equilateral triangle, we can use a special formula to find the angles. The formula finds the measure of each interior angle by dividing the sum of the angles by the number of angles the polygon has, represented by n. Let's look at how that plays out in a sample ACT problem. A regular pentagon is shown below. What is the measure of x? The answer choices are f, 36, g, 72, h, 100, j, 108, and k, 144. We'll underline the facts that it's a regular pentagon, and we'll circle the keyword x, which is what we're looking for. 
let's circle it in the drawing as well. Now, label the answer choices x equals. The problem tells us that this is a regular pentagon, so we know that all angles are equal. We can use the formula n minus 2 times 180 degrees. Substitute 5 for n, and remember, n is the number of angles in our pentagon. In this case, you have 5. We end up with 3 times 180, which equals 540 degrees. If we divide 540 by 5, the number of angles in our pentagon, we find that each angle measures 108 degrees, which is answer choice J. Very nice work. Next, we're going to talk about angles in circles. The sum of the angles that create a circle must add up to 360 degrees. Let's apply this concept to an example ACT problem. If angles W, X, Y, and Z all intersect at point A, and X equals 30, Y equals 60, and Z equals 85, what is the measure of W? The answer choices are measures of W, so we can go ahead and label them. Let's underline the facts and circle the information. Since all angles that form a circle must add up to 360 degrees, W plus X plus Y plus Z must equal 360. Let's plug the values we have into the equation. W plus 30 plus 60 plus 85 equals 360. 30 plus 60 plus 85 equals 175. Subtracting 175 from both sides, W equals 185. So, choice J is the correct answer. Okay, thanks for hanging in there. You're doing great, just one more. Let's look at this concept. Angles that create lines must add up to 180 degrees. Here's an example. In the figure below, what's the measure of the largest angle? As always, first circle the keywords, measure, largest, and angle. Label the answer choices largest angle, since that's what we're after. The answer choices are F, 20, G, 40, H, 60, J, 80, and K, 90. Since 3X is the largest angle, let's circle that in the drawing. All of these angles create line L, therefore, they must add up to 180 degrees. We can write the equation 2X plus 2X plus 2x plus 3x equals 180. Adding 2x plus 2x plus 2x plus 3x, we get 9x. Dividing each side of the equation by 9, we get x equals 20. We know from the question that the largest angle is 3x. So, because x equals 20, 3x equals 3 times 20, which is 60. This means 3x equals 60. Choice H is our answer. Congrats. Here's a treat for your hard work. Okay, have we covered every kind of bisected angle, every angle of angles? Well, we've certainly gone over a lot of them. We've got polygons, triangles, circles, and lines down. That should set you up nicely to ace angle questions on the ACT.